opening day here in Kansas City, there would be a marching band that would start here at 18th and Vine, and behind them, 17,000 plus, standing room only, going over to the ballpark to see their great Kansas City Monarchs do their thing. And so for me, the story of the Negro Leagues is America at her worst, but it's also America at her triumphant best. I'm Bob Kendrick, president, Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. I certainly understand that when you walk these streets, you're walking the exact same streets that Buck O'Neill, Cool Papa Bell, Josh Gibson, Satchel Paige, Lena Horn, Lionel Hampton, Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, they all walk these same streets. When I come out on the streets and I see this bristling activity with people coming in and out of the museum, the blue room is, is jumping and the music is spewing out and it just takes me back because we look so forward at virtually everything, but here at 18th and Vine, we're looking at returning it back to what it used to be when it was alive thriving and jumping. You take a deep breath and you kind of soak it all in. <laughs> to think that baseball is having as prevalent impact today as it did in 1920 when the Negro Leagues were formed here right around the corner at the old Purcell YMCA. You never want to see potential stifled. When I go over to the academy, I see so much potential in these young people, and I see the opportunity for them to flourish. We want to ingrain in them while they're young to dream, to be passionate about something, and that's what I see when I come over. They're instilling hope, and they're instilling determination and they're giving them the wherewithal to go out and pursue their dreams. And that's a beautiful thing. <laughs>